Hello YouTube, today I will be showing you my ultra stack super duper pump to make the muscles big like my chest. You too can look like me. <laughs> we're back! We're back in new surroundings of which you'll see more of later. But today we're concentrating on something a little bit more specific, a little bit more raw, a little bit more gritty. I'm going to take you through a full training session Deep, dirty and raw. No special crazy editing going on for this one. You're going to see the pace and the movement we go through a workout. And I'm going to show you kind of how I keep myself moving. We're going to be doing high frequency. We're going to be doing three body parts. And what we're doing here though, is we're going to start the changeover. We're going to start that change from the bodybuilding, more kind of just simplistic weightlifting into that functional side. We're going to start showing you how you can cross those over. So you still maintain that muscle stimulus, growth, pump, enjoyment, but we're starting to create more movements that are functional that are going to transition over into that fight style of training. We've talked about things before. What do you need supplement wise as a basis? We've been through this, but I will clarify it again for you. Creatine, foremost, first, the number one most studied supplement that there is. Most bang for your buck, 100% is going to work. You only need five grams a day, but this is your original investment. This should be the one, in my opinion, even over whey. This is going to help keep your energy levels up and recovery. It doesn't work immediately, it works acutely, which means it builds up over time in your system, so don't expect magic straight off the bat. But it will keep you looking fuller and help you look a little bit tighter, because what it actually does is help draw water into the muscles, and into means buzzing me Pumped! So the way in the creatine, that's the kind of like your daily, the daily, daily, dailies, the ones you're putting at the baselines. They're the ones that are just there over time, ticking away, helping you recover and helping you progress. But, for the focus, and for that day to day, you don't need it every day, but when you want it, it's there. We're bringing back the Kraken Piss. That's hella right. EHP PSI, EHP RP Max. PSI for pump, max for the stims. So the PSI is what I'm gonna be using through the early part of this session. This is no stims, pure pump. I want this one to burn out by the time I finish the weights so that when I hit the bag, that's when I'm gonna bring on the stims for the cardio, but no pump. This is all focus and stimulants to get those muscle fibers firing. I bring in that RP Max when I'm doing something that's gonna require me to stay on point, stay on focus and keep the energy and level and activity high. High output, I want the max. High pump, I want the PSI. Makes sense? Good. Let's make it. Let's unleash the Kraken. Now I just realized I said, one's pump, one's stim. And I'm gonna take one before and one after. And I've just put both in one mix. So today, I'm gonna suffer from my own errors. I'm just gonna drink this and take it both at the same time. It's not gonna be a huge deal. But optimization would have been to the pump formula first, that's gonna last about 40 minutes, and then hit that RP Max before I do my cardio stuff. But as it is. Mm, we're gonna unleash the Kraken regardless. Ha! Would you be having a little bit of something there that has a little bit of biscuit? Two things that you need to get amped for the gym. One, epic music, and two, sunglasses, like Kanye West, even though it's raining and there's no sun out. <laughs> so welcome to my new home. This is exercise for less of all places. I never thought anything like these kind of commercial places would be something that suits me, but a lot of them have started to really invest in solid equipment, because even upstairs here, we have a full cage, ring, and bags all in one place. So maybe we'll have our whole life wrapped up in one nice little building. But today, we're not gonna be doing anything pretty. We're not gonna be doing like a cool edit with a beat and all that, because I want you to see how I train, because so many of you are always asking, like what are rest times, what are the rest periods, how long do I train for? So I'm literally gonna show you a raw session. We're gonna try and cut it down a little bit, because otherwise this is gonna be an hour long video, but we're gonna show you raw sets. There's not gonna be an edit editing to make me look better. If I fuck up, you're gonna see me fuck up. And I'm gonna show you how to transition some other movements and start integrating some more functionality into your training to be able to start crossing over into that more fitness kind of lifestyle while still maintaining those muscle building gains. So I always train high frequency, and that means three body parts per session minimum. But what we do with that is we break things down a little bit. So I train everything at least twice a week, but we do less volume. So today I'm gonna to be doing shoulders, triceps, and some quad work. Now I will retrain all of those again within 72 hours using different exercises to what I do today. And that's kind of how every week runs. So I hope that makes sense. It's called high frequency training. 
Another important part of my training, always music. The power of music cannot be underestimated. So, for you guys who don't know already, we have an InstaFam playlist, which is about eight hours long. You guys pick this, song for song. So go on to Spotify and search InstaFam Lex Griffin, or there's my Gymshark playlist here, which also has some rocky kick-ass tunes on. If, however, you don't have the access to Spotify, my two recommendations at the moment, NF, this guy is the best white rapper around at the moment that I know of. And, now if you watch my Insta stories, you'll know about this one, but Hailstorm. This is absolute fire. So get on those two. So that's it now. We're gonna hit this workout. Rep for rep, set for set. No bullshit, no making me look good. You're gonna see me feel pain, get tired, sing to myself badly. Let's crack on. The final thing we're gonna notice here is we're introducing bag work, every session. now. You can do this pre or post, up to you. See how you have a go. I like often to do the bag work prior to the weight training because by doing the weights you can often tighten up. But today we're gonna to be doing it the other way around because I wanna challenge myself. I wanna be going on those bags tired because I'm gonna be working technique rather than power. So we're doing the weights, then we're gonna to go to the bags. Music on. So we're doing it, we're gonna warm up light weights going through ranges of motion everything you're going to be training that day always always warm up reduce that injury risk ah. After your warm-ups, that's warm ups done. Three sets on everything, at least 15 reps. You wanna be out of breath by the time you've done your warm-up. You almost wanna feel a little bit like, shit, why am I so tired? That's just your body waking its ass up. Then from there, you'll, you'll start going into your second wind, third wind, fourth wind. The body can keep going if the mind pushes it. It's the mind that often lets you down. Don't be scared about feeling tired. So point, boundary pushing, boundary pushing. So we're starting with triceps, then we're gonna move into quads and into shoulders. So I don't tend to do like tricep, tricep, then move on to the next body part. I'll interlace them all. The reason I do that is because you're going from one fresh body part to another fresh body part. So essentially you'll reduce your rest times because you're going to another body part. So you don't have that want or will to kind of just sit and wait and rest. But you can, if you want to, do one body part and then move on to the next, totally up to you. So this is a dumbbell, tricep, skull crushers with a rotation. The rotation on here helps hit all the heads of the tricep, which is very useful, plus functional. Eight, nine, 13, squeeze, 14, squeeze. Let's go. Damn it, no pain. Oh, wow. Three, two, last set, bitch. Come on, let's go. One, two. So I think I don't know what I want. Ah, last set, last set, last set. Eight. I get proud. Oh, come on. Ah, two more. Is that I'm dead? Oh, fuck you. Ten. Okay, keep moving. Last set done. We move. We move. Sick individual. And I'm doing this thing. Four. Let's go, bitch. Let's go, bitch. Four. Three. Heel. Heels. Ah. Uh. So with the leg press, what we're looking to do here is keep the weight on the heels. We do not let the hips come off or the ass come off the seat. So if you need to, grip the seat and pull yourself in a little bit. That might restrict a little bit of your negative motion, 
but it's going to at least keep you anchored in as you drive with the plate pull here you're going to be able to transfer that power through into the heels i'm looking to keep my feet hip width apart maybe slightly more and i'm rolling my knees out the whole time do this as you would squat so you're trying to roll your knees out twist the plate with your feet obviously your plate aren't going to move and you're driving through the heels so really bang up keeping those knees locked what we don't want to see is any buckling in of the legs like this really really bad might not hurt you on the day but over time something's gonna pop 30 seconds rest on everything and count it and i'm doing this thing that's one two two three ah Time's gonna burn. What is going to burn? What is going to turn? Three, two, one. Let's go. I don't run. I'm not afraid. You're gonna hear me saying my life, my love. Two more sets. Two more sets. Come on. No pain. Let's go. Let's go. My life. My love. I said, drug my life. Five. Come on. Last set. All day, bitch. All day, bitch. Minimum of eight. Minimum of eight. Everyone else quits now. Come on. Eight. Nine. Six. Seven. Eight. Ah. Two fuck you reps. Fuck you reps. Come on. Fuck you. Ah. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Pump is not going. So, talking about that functionality of movement, this is a great shoulder exercise. It's also really good for kind of punch power and just functional movement. So what we're looking to do is fire this through. We're gonna punch it up, we're gonna fire through the hips. So I really wanna drive off that back foot, bang, punch it out, punch it out. Switch that hip through, 10 to 15 each side, switching it over. If you wanna do the front lead leg or keep your natural lead leg, it's up to you. Either way, just make sure you're really firing that hips through, but controlling the press through the shoulder, keeping that elbow tight. This is one of the problems you're gonna find when you first start doing this, is that over pump. So, my legs are just absolutely jacked up and pumped out. Can't get comfortable, can't really um, squeeze them or focus on it, so. I'll do give them. Do a dance, mate. Yeah, I'll give them a jig, <laughs> not two step. <laughs> <laughs> just give them 30 seconds to kind of get that lactic acid out, I'll just leave a walk and crack on. It ain't going away, so fuck it, let's move on, let's go. Sixteen. So we start it, no weight, get the movement, the slow thing coming up, and I mean slowly. Two and a half fives. Goosebumps. That's the right <laughs> music. A little mayhem. Second one, let's try steps now. Oh, 
Always important to keep counting. 15, 16, keep counting. You take a drink. Jump three seconds. 21. So that's what's going to keep you on pace. You've got to be your own motivator. If you train with another person, be on each other's asses. Get this full setting. Just make sure the pace. That's what I'm talking about. Have everything ready to go. Straight in. Hips in. Finishing that angle. Squeeze. Control the negative. Ah, make it work. Ah, I don't care about that weight. I don't care about anyone looking at me. Ah, I do what I gotta do to make me better. Ah, what do I feel? The wall shake it. Wall shake it. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it. One, two, three, three more. One. That's one. Fuck you now. Fuck you. Fuck you. Ah, one. Get up, get up. Moving on now to another functional movement. So we did that leg press. That's kind of your big compound movement. Squeeze, control technique, weight. Now that functionality we want in there. So we get squatting motion in, in the form of a jumping, medicine ball squat so I'm going to be holding medicine ball on my chest coming down nice and deep and then jumping up and exploding so we're getting that explosive movement with that kind of technical squat technique in there and uh, then obviously the next day when I come in and do the quads I can do an actual squat with a bar and then the next dynamic movement could be like you know like a lunge or side lunges think it up there's nothing there's no real right or wrong here try everything and anything Whatever gives you that burn, gives you that pump, is it's right, it's correct. We just want range of motion, movement and explosion. Ah, and good music. Get my down, man. Gonna get mine. Oh. 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 Let's go. Say, no pain. No pain. Oh, come on. Hi. Two. Three. Oh. Oh. Fire. Four. Three. Come on. There's no pain. There's no pain. There's no pain. Get it. Get up, Aaron, get up, get up, get up. What time did we start? About 10 past three? Yeah, yeah. And it's now 25 to four. So we've smashed all this so far in under half an hour, which if you are on it, like I'm pushing today, I want to make my lungs burn. I want to make it hurt because I had missed weeks going to LA, then uh, having to go on shoot. When you go on shoots, you're working, but you're not working out, and uh, lack of sleep. So I could come in here and I could be a bitch. I could be like, I'm tired, haven't trained, it's gonna be too sore, need to build my body back in. But I don't. It's five days of missing training, not five years. So is this gonna hurt? It's hurting already, yeah. Is it gonna suck? Yeah, it's sucked already. But I'm learning to push through boundaries, I'm learning to push myself, I'm learning to create positive mechanisms. And that one big trigger that I use is one, two, three, go. So if I fail, like you'll see me fail a number of times so far, you'll see me in my head counting. And then what I'm saying is one, two, three, go. Instead of me thinking two more reps, I'm gonna die. I'm thinking two more reps. If I take a break, I know I've got at least one more. I've got at least one more. So I'm creating that positive mechanism. So now we're gonna finish with a functional shoulder movement, which is one I throw into pretty much every day, even when I'm not doing shoulders. And it's a bicep curl into the Arnold press, which you'll see me doing in the warm up. But with this, what I'm looking to do, because I've had scapular issues, I'm looking to curl up, bring the elbows tight, roll those elbows out real wide, make that scapula open up, because I had a winged scapula, which means the scapula wasn't moving out as it should do, so the trap was doing the work of stabilizing instead of the scapula, which is gonna reduce kind of rear delt and shoulders. So I'm looking to come out wide, work that scapula, keep them here, press up, 
back down and bring it all the way back round. What I'm not doing is like this little di like diluted twist, a really tight twist. I'm coming out and wide and back down and around. Really making it work. Lightweight, hard work. Uh, eight, nine, ten, eight. Die. Because uh, uh, this is a double movement, I'm maybe going to look at less reps, more like 6 to 10 range. But I'm standing, I'm not seated. That's going to make my core work, it's going to make me have to squeeze my glutes to stop my hips rocking. So it's that overall technique that you're going to require here. And that's what I'm looking for in everything. Try and make everything more dynamic, everything a little less isolated. So you can start by simply doing things you would do seated, that you can do stood up, do them stood up. Make that core work, think about posture, control. Oh, it hurts. Two. Six. Uh, seven. Uh, one more. One more. Ah. Uh. As you can see, by no means are we limiting that kind of bodybuilding work for the muscle, that pump stimulation. But what we're doing is working all those stabilizer muscles more, making the whole body work as a unit. And uh, that's only gonna benefit you in everything else that you do. <sighs> it's all about how hard you push yourself. If you push yourself, everything can be made difficult from six kilos to 60 kilos. It's how you work. Uh, come on. Fuck. You. Ah. Uh, uh. You forget. If you ever forget what set you're on, you just go back to the last one you remember. So, I remember that we've done two. So this is three. I might have done three, but I can't remember doing it, so we always go back to that last one we can remember, which was two sets. So, third set. Oh, my face is strong. Oh, my face is strong. No pain. All day now, bitch. I want two extra reps. Let's get four. Ooh, ah. I like it heavy. Two. Ah. Ah. Off. Oh. Oh. So that's it, that's it. We smashed that in 40 minutes. Yeah, ah. brother. Ah. I thought that was tough, we're done. How good do I fucking feel for that? Awesome. You know, you be strapped at your own capabilities. When you keep counts, when you keep reps, and when you have that playlist that fires you through and you create those mechanisms. Now we're gonna take 10, 15 minutes, let the body cool, stretch out, then we're gonna set up and do that bag work. We're gonna be getting back eventually to doing those eight three minute rounds, kind of full pace, technical fight style. So, we head upstairs now to see something very cool. Are you ready? New home, check this out. Check it out, proper ring. And then we have distribution of different bags. So we have a light bag, a medium bag, and a long heavy bag which is way harder than it looks, which I found out the other day when I gave it a good wallet. <laughs> and we have the most... Well, not entirely sure how we're going to use this yet, other than for epic pitches. Welcome to the Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Uh, shoes off on you, mate? I know, yeah, not expecting the dojo, <laughs> am I? Oh. So hopefully what we're going to be doing is bringing you some cool mitt work and bag work kind of stuff all from this area for you guys to be able to implement into your routine you don't need to know how to punch you don't have to have had fighting experience to be able to put yourself through these workouts through this kind of functional training and plus it's never going to hurt you to learn how to throw a good punch Whew. at the moment i've got on an iron stringer which i'm glad they're bringing these back stringers are back in town which is good for me because i'm not a fan of wearing tanks when i'm training it feels restrictive so i've got these on but look i've obviously got the uh, combat kind of tracky bottoms on. 
these are not really suitable for doing the bag work in. So what we're going to be doing is opening up that fresh fresh, that new new. So these are the Element, Gymshark Element base layer. We've worked legs today, so it's going to help keep blood in the legs. It's going to help keep everything nice and warm, stop us tightening up, because when you tighten up and get cool, that's when, when you're suddenly going to throwing dynamic things, even moving around, sidestepping, all that kind of stuff your body might not be used to, this is going to help keep everything nice and warm, which keeps everything supple and is going to reduce that risk of twinging or twinking something. Plus, stretchy stretchy means movie movie. I got my Venom 12 ounces. I love these gloves. 12 ounces is a nice weight, protects your hand, but it's still light enough to do good cardio before you uh, build that sh kind of shoulder stamina up. But then you can move to 16 ounces to make yourself work harder. Underneath, I've got some uh, gel padded slip-on wraps, but they have that extra ankle uh, wrist wrap on there as well, just to support stop that flexion. Longish hair, hair's getting there now. Getting that, that, that do back, bringing back that Viking mode. It can get in the way, sweat can get in your eyes, so I literally carry one of these on my wrist now. So that when I come to do the bag work, I can just get that hair out of the way. It's not getting in my eyes. I'm not here to look cool. I'm not trying to do that. It's actually functional. If you happen to suit it, all the better. <laughs> <laughs> now a lot of you've been asking whenever I put this on stories and stuff. Lex, what's that round timer that you use? Well, people, shockingly enough, it's round timer. The app. Five rounds, three minutes, and I only have 30 seconds rest. Now, if you're really new to this, you can have a minute's rest. 30 seconds, I'm still gonna be tired. That's the point again, I wanna be pushing myself. I want to get back into the next round and not be fully recovered. I wanna start learning to push through. I'm not gonna be blowing my load at the beginning by coming in and going, bah, 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 hashtag innuendo. <laughs> you don't wanna prematurely blow your load on the back. Pause. <laughs> be methodical, pace yourself, come in, one, two, three, move out. Maybe do like combos of one, two, three, move, one, two, three, move. Don't get too complicated. Set up your combinations. We're gonna be running through combination and bag work in complete separate videos, so stay tuned for those. I'm gonna start. First round is just going to be one, two, three shots, moving in and out boxing. Second round is going to be kicks and knees. So moving around, working that distance with the jab and then throwing the kicks. Wah. Then the third round, I'm gonna be bringing the two together. So we're gonna be working punches, finishing with a kick each time. So that's gonna be a lot more methodical, probably less overall thrown but more thought into each one of bah, bah, bam, really whapping them in and then fourth and fifth round moving at kind of a fight pace and um, getting that breathing technical moving in and out working those angles bag work is massively about how much you put into it if you want to be a slack bitch and come on here and go i'm tired i'm tired uh, or then you're, you're going to feel tired and you're going to be slow you want to be here you want to have that little voice in your head like we had down there one two three go so it's pop 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 move out constant movement if you're too tired to throw a punch move your body cycle circle circle move dip and then just jab jab and keep moving that's what it's about you do not have to be perfect at this like don't worry about looking like a dumbass whenever we start something new we all look like dumbasses we were all dumbasses once until we get good at it little tips and tricks one have the lid off your water before you start then you don't have to take your gloves off to get a drink and two Use your nose to start the timer because you have to blow up <laughs> and you don't miss any seconds. Now, in the first couple of rounds, I'm going to be able to keep my headphones on because I'm going to be going kind of relatively methodically. By third or fourth round, I'm going to have to ditch the headphones because I'm going to be moving much more dynamically and a little bit quicker and throwing really from a lot more from like power through the hips and stuff. If you have some sport, want to get some sports ones if you like your music and you can help zone out from the rest of the world if you're feeling a little bit like self-conscious, have some music on and I guarantee you won't notice anyone around you. We're going to be working through three combinations. Combination one is a jab, jab, straight. Combination two, left, straight, left. And combination three, I'm going to come in with that straight right. I'm going to hit the body, come back up to the top with a hook to the head and then finish that straight right. So it's straight right, body, head, straight right. Like I've shown you before, simple combinations of as the bag's coming at you, bang, 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 then chase it down and then move out the way. Little things like that, just, just don't stand statically in front of the bag, just hitting it. So you don't have to hit the bag every time either. You can be just jabbing that range and then stepping in, bang, coming back out and just using that range finder, dropping shots in. And if you fuck up a shot and you mess up a punch, it doesn't matter. Reset, keep moving, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be perfect. So we're gonna start with this bag because it swings and moves. Then we're gonna start bringing the kicks in. I'm gonna move around. This is a heavier bag, so it's probably 30 pounds, 20, 30 pounds heavier than that bag. That's really soft. So this one's gonna take that kick, but it's still gonna move. And then if I want to kind of work slower, more methodical power, where I wanna stay a little bit more static and only have head movement, I can come around to a real heavy bag. So this one, which really doesn't really move too far when you're even giving it a good crack. 
But what I wouldn't want to be doing is smashing this every day all the time because this is going to mess you up. You want some bags that have a little bit of give and a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of leeway in them so that you're not going to be smashing your knuckles up and things like that. Do what you can do. If all you can do is punches that are straight, one, two, three, that's fine. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, move. Don't have to be perfect. It's fucking work. You might also notice I'm smart enough to bring compression wear, but I'm not smart enough to bring the right footwear. So if you're wearing running shoes or anything like that, ditch them, go barefoot. Don't wear squishy, squishy trainers. You either want some boxing boots or no boots. One minute, one minute. Ooh, I'm gonna fuck it, come on. Oh, oh ding ding, motherfucker. Step in. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh shit, come on mate. Suck it up. Let's go. This might look like shit. It doesn't matter. Keep moving, keep moving. I expect it to be really bad today. Because I've had like two weeks of not doing bag work. Two weeks is like taking a month and a half. Half I'd say, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Something like that. It's like three times. It's like losing six weeks. Step move. Step move. Step in. Hook hook. Come on, slow it down. That felt good. Hard. Very, very hard. So there you go. That's a raw, complete workout with all the mechanisms. Oh, very sweet. All the mechanisms that I'm trying to implement on a daily basis for myself. One, two, three, go. Positive triggers. Never sit there thinking, I'm tired, I'm tired. You always just think, one more, two more. When I'm looking at a timer, I'm not thinking, oh, how long's left? I'm thinking, only 30 seconds left. Only 30 seconds left to get your fucking working. And no matter how tired I am, I know if I throw when I'm tired, when I throw when I don't want to throw, kick when I don't want to kick, every one of those is progression, every one of those is a win. And that's the same for the weights. Every rep you don't want to do, that you can do with good technique, is a win. So that's it, I hope you've enjoyed this raw workout. If you'd like to see more of this, hit me up in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. I think it's here. Make sure you, you hit the notification bell to be notified of all uploads. Because as a standard, they'll only notify you of like one of every five. Whew. And hopefully this will inspire some of you to get out of that weight section and into a club, into the bag section, back onto cardio, back onto playing football or some sport that you left behind because you thought you had to for bodybuilding. The fact is, you don't have to ever sacrifice anything from your life if you don't want to, if you're smart, if you're intelligent, and if you listen to other people who you know have already got to where you want to be. Surround yourself with people like that. Don't listen to the people that tell you you can't. Never, ever, ever listen to somebody that starts the conversation with you that focuses on something negative because that person is toxic. Anyone like that that's always negative in your life is a toxic part of your life. They're going to bring you no positives. They're going to bring you no joy in the long term. So don't be afraid to be alone, to cut people out, to start new friendships, to reach out to new people. Who surrounds you makes you who you are. Your goal sets and your mentality make you who you are. Not what you say you're going to do, what you actually fucking do. That's all I got for today. I'll catch you in the next one. Boom, baby. 
I've been doing shit different Cooking like a chef, I've been all up in the kitchen Had to make a move, had to make a little distance A lot of people tripping, they could never see the vision Fuck that, tell them bye